Proof. Why the school system is broken and why it's designed to keep people dumb. During the next few minutes, I'm going to back this statement up with undeniable proof. First, we're going to look at some stats from about 200 years ago. Then we're going to see what happened in 1902 with John D. Rockefeller that started this mess. And then we're going to expose documents showing the purpose of the school system and why it's designed to keep people dumb, keep people suppressed. So if we look at the 1840, so we go back to 1840, the Census Bureau reported that 91.5% of white adults were literate. That means they could read and write. People of color were not counted because it was not until 1865 when the 13th Amendment was adapted, this is what ended slavery. So because of this, that's why some of the stats around this time only mention white people. Now, let's look at the education from 1800 to about 1900. In 1850, 65% of white children went to school. So about half. 1870, about 65% of people, 60, uh, sorry, ages 5 to 17 years old, went to public school. The average school system was about 100 days a year. And many schools lasted just a few hours when they were in session. During this time, the school system was not ran by government like it is today. Many students also didn't go to school. Many families would hire a teacher to come to their home and educate their children. Students would also spend time with mom and dad to learn about life and other important, marketable skills. The school system ended in the eighth grade. And you can actually pull up tests of the final uh, graduation in 1895. So people that graduated the final grade of the 8th grade, you can pull up like the test online and see what it looks like, you know, just in case you're curious. Remember, even being educated this way, in 1840, the Census Bureau reported 91.5% white adults were literate, meaning they could read and write. The problem. 1902, John D. Rockefeller started the General Education Board. Its role was supposedly designed to help improve higher education and medical schools in the United States. And it says it, quote, right from here, right from uh, Wikipedia. The General Education Board was a private organization which was used primarily to support higher education and medical schools in the United States. And to help rule white and black schools in the South, as well as modernize farming practices, as well as modernized farming practices in the South. So generally to improve the education, you know, of the United States. John D. Rockefeller had a close friend and mentor named Frederick Taylor Gates. Frederick was a business and philanthropic advisor to Mr. Rockefeller. Frederick managed John D. Rockefeller's money, and he also was a, a president of the General Education Board. Frederick wrote a very popular paper called The Country School of Tomorrow. If we pull it up on Wikipedia or anywhere else, or Wikipedia or anywhere else, it's very common knowledge that Frederick's paper he wrote, The Country School of Tomorrow, sorry, I spelled that wrong, is what influenced the General Education Board. We pull it up right here. This is straight from Wikipedia. The board, General Education Board, was created in 1902 after John D. Rockefeller donated a million dollars to the cause. His family would eventually donate $180 million. Prominent member... Frederick Taylor Gates envisioned the country school of tomorrow, wherein young and old will be taught in practical ways how to make rural life beautiful, intellectual, fruitful, recreative, helpful, and joyous. So isn't that nice? The country school of tomorrow says, and it does say that young and old will be taught in practical ways how to make rural life beautiful, intelligent, fruitful, recre uh, recreative, helpful, and joyous. Seems like a nice cause, a nice organization, doesn't it? Well, let's look at the actual document now, the Country School of Tomorrow, and see what else it says Wikipedia might have just, well, accidentally left out. So here's the actual paper, um, Country School of Tomorrow, and you can actually pull this up online. Um, sometimes it's, 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 It'd be surprisingly sometimes harder for me to pull it up online. Sometimes you got to use like DuckDuckGo or something like that. But you can pull this up online and read it. And it says it right here in the document. And of course, it was by Frederick Taylor Gates. And it says it right here in the document. Chairman of the Federal, uh, or sorry, Chairman of the General Education Board. So it says some stuff. But then it says some stuff like this. 
We shall not try to make these people or any of their children into, philo into philosophers or men of learning or of science. We are not to raise up among them authors, orders, poets, or men of letters. We shall not search for great artists, painters, musicians, or cherish the hum the humbler ambition to raise up from among them lawyers, doctors, preachers, politicians, statesmen, whom we have ample supply. Okay? And then it has a quote that says, Mind not higher things. It basically says this is one of the things we're going to follow. Mind not higher things. Now what does this mean? Not to be high-minded. Do not think too highly of yourselves. And despise others um nor grasp at things too high for you that are out of your reach and beyond your keep your capacity nor seek great things for yourself as riches honors etc interesting and we're going to pull up a quote here in a sec but the translation of high things just as just another translation online is um um, uh, uh, high place, ev uh, ev elevation. Um, so basically it's, it's achieving more, wanting to achieve more, wanting to kind of reach your, pull, your full potential is essentially what this means. I just wanted to pull up a couple definitions because if we look right here, it says putting therefore all high Things quite behind us. So it says right there in the document that the goal is to put all high things quite behind us and turn with a sense of freedom and delight to the simple, lowly, needful things that promise well for rural life. It is to be in season, so school now, is to be in session all year round. And everyone shall have something yet to learn always before him. Every industry in the district finds place in our curriculum. Every kitchen, barn, dairy, shop is a laboratory for our school. The growing of crops, the orchards, the vineyards, the gardens, etc., etc., are part of our scientific equipment. And life within is material and specimen for our study. So basically, it means that we're just going to start studying all sorts of stuff. We're going to have a vast curriculum where we're going to study all sorts of things year-round. They shall all be demonstrators of the highest achievable results in field, garden, kitchen, sewing room, orchards, vineyards, pastures, dairy, lawn, Meadow, not forgetful of the flowers and the beauty of the landscape. Children shall learn the names of all the trees, their leaves, the, not sure how to pronounce that word, but the, their branching, their methods of growth, their value and use, the names also of all the wild birds, their songs and their habits. Accordingly, there shall be music, vocal and instrumentative. We shall have orchestra, possible a van, and dancing shall be taught. Their learning, their doctor's degrees, their academic groans, find their end in livelihood, in personal distinction, in social advancement, and, lo and not in the enrichment and uplifting of the common life. Interesting. So we don't want to enrich, we don't want the school system to be designed to enrich and upload and uplift the common life. And we don't want people to aspire to be that. It says it right there in the document. So two things are clear. The general education board's general educational education board's goal is to keep students busy to have them studying things and memorizing useless facts and information, most of which they won't be able to apply in the real world. The General Education Board's goal was to keep people doing okay, keep them suppressed, keep them in line, head down, nice, obedient, oh, nice, obedient worker, but never needing 
to achieve great things. Questions to ask. I remember in high school, students that were in my class would ask the teacher why we had to learn these things. The teachers themselves never gave a good answer. I even remember one of the teachers saying, well, you know, this is how it works. You're going to learn all this stuff and you're going to study real hard. Then you're going to go to college and you're going to learn a bunch of stuff. Yeah, you're not really going to use any of it. But when you go get a job, they're going to see that you worked really hard and learned a bunch of stuff. And then they're going to give you a job. And even back then, not kind of understanding what provides value to society in the marketplace, even back then I remember thinking, that makes no sense whatsoever. And then if we ask questions like, why do we need to learn complex math by hand when there are calculators, programs, and systems that will do all that for us easily that, pretty much, that, that we all have access to? Am I going to be stranded on an island and somehow be in a position where the one thing I need to do is a complex algebra problem by hand? Maybe, but very doubtful. The General Education Board was founded in 1902. John D. Rockefeller gave the board $180 million. Now, adjusted for inflation, the dollars lost about 99% of its purchasing power. You know, it's $120, $150 billion equivalent to today's money. The board gave the money out as grants. Basically, what they said is, you teach this way. You teach our way. Start teaching this topic this way. Teach our way and we'll give you half a million dollars, a million dollars, $250,000, $100,000. John also founded the University of Chicago. So John D. Rockefeller spread this message and his ideas of the General Education Board throughout the United States education system and changed how people became educated. Now let's look at today. Let's look at the actual facts. Since the 1800s, think of all the advancements in society, all the technology we have, all the new information and products and services we have access to. Let's compare the statistics that we looked at earlier of education to today. Today, high school graduate rate in the United States, that is to the 12th grade, is 88%. That includes whites, colored people, everyone. In 1840, 91.5% of white adults were literate, meaning they could read and write. In 2022, only 79% of adults are literate. 54% of adults have a literacy rate below that of a 6th grade reading level today, of a 6th grade reading and writing level today. So about half of the adults today can't read above a seventh grade reading level. They can only read, um, oh, I'm sorry. They can't even read, a. Uh, it's below a sixth grade. So they can't even read a sixth grade. They can only read below a sixth grade. So about half of adults today can only read below, read and write below a sixth grade reading level today. People in the school system, people are in school for more days out of the year in school longer for each, each, uh, each day they are in school, but they're learning mostly useless, distracting information. And remember, their literacy rate has fallen. It hasn't gone up or stayed the same. It's actually fallen and gone down. So to wrap up this presentation and answer the question, has the education system failed? And the answer is no, it hasn't. It's doing exactly what it was designed to do. And now, if you are wondering why most of the stuff taught in school is useless, hopefully this presentation sheds some light on this subject.